Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Man's No Bull Beer Views. Um, it's definitely a special day today because I um, get to do a review of uh, something from uh, Dry Fontanin, which I have not done any reviews on this channel for them, um, and I haven't done, I've done a bunch of sour stuff, but I don't think I've done any, um, I don't think I've done any Lambics. Um, I might have done like one, I think that Detroke one, but that wasn't really a true Lambic, so, uh, pretty excited for this, um, <clears throat> this is, uh, their Cuvée de Armand and Gaston, which, um, This is blend number 17, says the season of 1718. Particular cuvee, Armand and Gaston, has been blended with Lamex from eight different barrels and originating from ten different brews. Uh, bottle date, January 19th, 2018, and then best before October 26th, um, 2038. And then the funny thing about that, um, I actually learned this from Don't Drink Beer, which I think is cool, unless you made this up, but I don't know why you would make this up. So I always thought it was interesting that the best buy dates on their, their labels are 20 years out, which you would, might think is crazy, but for Lamex it actually makes sense. Um, but they're not, they're not exactly 20 years. It's 20 years, some, it's uh, 20 years and then like some extra amount of days. So I always wondered like why if they're going to do it 20 years out, is it not exactly 20 years? Well, so this says October 26, 2038. October 26th is Armand's birthday. So that's kind of just a silly thing that he does apparently, which I think is funny. Uh, but yeah, this is the first true Lamech I've done on here. I have had this beer before, but it's been probably over a year. And that's what's really cool about Lambics is, you know, each one is a different blend, so they're never really going to be the same beer. Uh, and this one, so I generally like Lambic a lot, but I don't know that if it's worth the hassle of getting some of them compared to some of the really good American Wild Ales. But I do appreciate it when I have them. Um, and if I can just get them on the shelf, which I was able to buy this down here, which is awesome, I... Uh, We'll definitely scoop them up, and <clears throat> but this one in general was definitely one of my favorites that I've ever had. The Armand and Gaston, so pretty excited for this. This was uh like pretty limited when it originally came out, but now it's been being uh, distroed, which is cool. So you can get it, I think, probably like twice a year, uh, and not doesn't matter much for lamb mix, but in general, I'll. Like any beer, I'll say the ABV, it's a 5.9. Um, it says ingredients, 60% malted barley, 40% unmalted wheat, uh, old hops, and water. And obviously their, uh, whatever their um, ambient, ambient's the wrong word, whatever their uh, housed spontaneous fermentation yeast is um I will say too these uh I know I'm not decanting this the way it really should be done I actually do have a uh, lambic basket but it's funny I never bring it out because I really really ever have these bottles but I should when I'm doing one of these but I didn't think about it until I started the video so I'm not going to go grab it now uh on in there so as you can see it pours a like a pretty dark um golden color almost it looks a little darker in the, the video than it does on the other side to me um almost like a rusted orange color with a, a pretty thin white head <laughs> Mm. So, there's a lot of, um, like, apple skins in there. Uh, I definitely get a good bit of uh, minerality, and that's one thing that I remember liking about this one specific specifically. It, ha it has a lot of that minerally, like, wet rock quality that I really like. Um, 
in Lambix and some of the better American wild ales. <clears throat> um, it's uh, it, it has like a little bit of a leathery character, and almost like and sometimes I get this with some of the dry fontaine and stuff more than uh, Cantillon, like a little bit of like almost like burnt popcorn, which is a weird. It's not a lot. I think some other people associate it with like burnt rubber. Um, to me, it comes off more as like burnt popcorn, but it's it's uh, pretty mild. It's interesting. Um, it's not quite as funky in the in the flavor as it is in the aroma. Um, so. I'm definitely still getting more of like the overripened apple character. Um, not like green apple like a seed of aldehyde, but just like overripened red apples. Um, there's definitely some musty character. Uh, and you like that wet rock damp basement. Um, and there's a little bit of like a cheesy funk on the back end, but not quite as much as I was expecting uh, given the the aroma. The acidity level is um, is pretty on point. I would say it it works well with the uh, the funk and the flavors that are in this beer, but at no at no point does it ever feel like it's burning the tongue or the back of the throat, or it doesn't even really make your mouth pucker. Um, excuse me, that is one thing that I will say about. I mean, some lambics are crazy sour, so but this beer specifically, the acidity level in it is absolutely perfect. Um, I think this is one of the some lambics I couldn't drink a lot of. This is one that I could definitely drink like several bottles of this probably. I mean, also because it's not that strong in alcohol. Um. But it definitely has a a real earthy character to it. Um, and there is some of that burnt popcorn character that... It, I don't know. I, I've explained it to other people and they say they don't get it. I think what, it, what I'm picking up as is what they pick up as burnt rubber. Um, which... To me, seems to be in like all of these... All of the better land mix, so... Maybe it's just something that I don't like about them, and other people it doesn't bother them. Uh, it doesn't prevent me from liking the beverage. I still think it's it's a really good beer, but in my opinion, like that character is what puts this. I know it's blasphemy to for to most people for, for me to say this, but that character is what puts some of like the really good American wild ales, in my opinion, above the above land mix because they don't have. They might not have quite the depth and the funk, but they're way cleaner and easy to drink, easier to drink. And for me, that's what I want. Uh, but for a Lambic, this is definitely really easy to drink. This is definitely, for sure, one of my favorite ones. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't get it. I think it's tasty, but that that character that I'm getting, I'm not saying that this this batch or this bottle was bad because I get it out of. It's even more prolific in Dry Fontaine, but I definitely get it in Cantillon too. Um, it's just something that I don't particularly like about Lamb Mix, or to me, it's it's a detracting factor that takes away from the experience of all the other good characters that they have. Uh, <coughs> so. To be honest, I bought this specifically to 
do a review on this channel because I've never done a review of a Lambic before. But I'm I'm a, I'm gonna give this one a drink, not a buy, which I know most a lot of people would say is crazy. But I'm only basing that on price. Um, if this was you know twenty bucks or something, I would absolutely say it's a buy because it's still a really good beer. But it was thirty five bucks for this. And from what I've heard, that's a uh, that's actually a decent or no, I think it was, sorry, it might, I think it was like thirty two or thirty three. It was thirty five with tax, and what I've heard, that's actually like a pretty decent price in the U.S. for this. So I feel like I could get American Wild Ales, like the really really good ones that I like a lot, like some of the side project ones in Hill Farmstead and whatever, for um, I love for less and I like them as much if not better so to me it's kind of hard justifying spending $35 on this one I can get something that I like better for less uh, but it is still a really good beer and it's definitely one of the better Lambics that I've ever had so if you like Lambic I'm sure you probably already had this but it's definitely worth checking out um, but I mean it's, the Lambics are on the pricey, pricey side it is what it is so uh I still recommend the beer itself. If you're not worried about the money, I definitely recommend trying out the beer. It's very, very good. I just don't know if I would... Uh, I don't think I would drop a 35 bucks on it again, but that's just me. So I think that's all I got in this one. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I look forward to doing the next one. Thanks.